it's an emergency um, by way of cash. So um, we will listen to the word. After the word, I'll come up to lead us in a couple of prayers and share with you a couple of things that God gave to me in the course of that waiting on the Lord. There's no waiting, there's no stretch of waiting on the Lord that is small. They all had their rewards, spiritual rewards. And for everyone who, is, who has been diligent, who has been obedient, who has been focused, there is a reward for you. I'll be sharing with you. But for now, I want to bring up my wife, Pastor Mrs. Emmanuel, to give us the word.
of my understanding. Right? You said, see, the hand understanding has it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Lord, speak to me as your word, Lord. Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to me, I ask that you speak to your church. I ask, oh God, that you, your word will have life. But you say, the word of God, there are spirits that are life. Lord, I step aside, oh God. You see, as a person of God. Minister to your people, oh God. For they are come to hear you, Lord, not a man. Let them hear you, oh God, not me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I will take authority over every spirit of distraction, misunderstanding, every contrary spirit that makes the word ineffective. We ask that your word will have effect and will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. But Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Pastor, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I said I would take the message, and then yesterday I started having a. What do you call it? Chicken legs. Ah, no, no, I'm not ready. But God now said, I'll give you a message weeks or months back. Go and get that message. And it's so relevant. So I'm going to time myself because I've been told that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, can we open to Romans 4? Our text is taken from Romans 4. So the title of today's message is The Past Tense of God. The Past Tense of God. When I was doing a study based on a Bible study that we did on Thursday evening, and I just saw, because for a long time we're trying to understand why God says, by your strife you were healed and it was past tense. It didn't make sense, but I struggled to get it. And then God started showing me that. There is a way that he speaks. So the title of this message, and I wrote it down in my daily devotional a few weeks back, the past tense of God. So we're going to look at Romans 4 from verse 16. Please, can you bring it up? Or I'll read it for now. But I want us to also see the scripture, not just listen, because then it gets into you. <coughs> And if you have a pen, you make notes from verse 16 to 25. So I'll read it quickly. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, that's the Hebrews, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, that's us, who is the father of us all. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made you, please note that, I have made you what? A father of many nations. That actual verse 17 is being quoted from Genesis chapter 17. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things, please note that again, which do not exist as though they did. All right? Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he, that's Abraham, became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And be not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, even as he was a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he did not waver the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he has promised, he was able to perform. Now, that he there is talking about God. Therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. 23 says, Now it was not written down, this is not written down for Abraham's sake, it was written for our sake, it was not written down for his sake alone, that it might be preached to you, but also for us, that it might be preached to us, who believe in him, God, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Now I want us to focus on a few verses there, but before then, what I found out was that if, what this is just to give a, a, if you want to understand the work with somebody, you need to know how they speak. True or false? Yeah. Okay, if for instance somebody comes here and he's speaking Russian and you don't hear a word of Russia, you may be blessing you, but you're like, what is this? Say? All right, so the same way to God has ways he speaks, and I started noticing it. I started noticing it now. Let us quickly look at Joshua 10, an example of God speaking in the past tense. Joshua 10. We'll read verse 1 to 2 to give us um, a background, then verse 5 and verse 8. Now it came to pass when Adonijah, king of Adonidek, sorry, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, 
had heard how Joshua had taken high and had utterly destroyed it, and he had gone down to Jericho and Akin, as he had done to her and Akin, and the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. If you jump to verse, <coughs> verse 5. Basically, they feared greatly. Verse 2 says they feared greatly and they started ganging up. So these kings all ganged up. Yeah? Now go to verse 8. I know because of time, that is all moving. And this is what God said. So there were five kings, if you read the first few verses, who had ganged up. We saw that God was really helping Joshua. And they now said, ah, let's gang up more so that we can overcome them. And sometimes that's what happens. Just because you had a victory now does not mean that the enemy will say, I'll give up on you. You will look for gang up, but it will not succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. But see what God says to Joshua. That this was what started me on this study. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear not, fear them not, for I have. And that thing just leaped at me. I have delivered. No, Joshua had not gone into this battle yet. But as far as God was concerned, I have delivered them into your hand. And there's not a man that will stand before you. You understand? So it was past tense as far as God was concerned. And I started saying, God, do you actually... Because initially I only had that First Peter 2.24. God said, by your stripes you were healed. But I started saying that God actually speaks in past tense. And there are implications for us. Let's keep on. Because I want us to give us more than one reference. Now let's look at Joshua 6. 1-3. to three, The story of Jericho. Joshua 6. So please note that Joshua 10.8. Your, in your Bible, your, your notes. Now Joshua 6. One, two, three. Now, Jericho, the city was strictly, I don't know if you have any other question, but let's continue. It was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. So nobody went out, or nobody went in. Now, verse 2, look at that verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given you, I see it again. In what? Past tense. I have given you, I have given into your hand Jericho, and the king, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city. Now, he started giving him strategy. So, first of all, as far as God was concerned, he had what? Giving him. The city, yeah? yeah? Okay. We have seen, there's a second example. We have seen the one of Romans. But let's now look at um, Genesis 15. Genesis 15, verses 1 to um, 6. But because of time, I want us to go to verse 18. An example of the past tense of God. Again. I don't know which version. Can you go back to your KJV? Sorry. I know I need to change verse. So in that, in that day, the Lord made a covenant with God, saying, Unto thy seed, I have given this land. So I saw again that God said, I've given it. He's always saying, I have done it. He, he hardly ever says, I will. The I will is to probably give you instruction. And I started noticing that pattern. Let's look at one more again. Genesis 17, verse 3 to 5 this time. And Abraham, this one went God visited Abraham the second time. And Abraham fell on his face. And then God talked to him, saying, as for me, please note that as I will come back to that verse, for as for me, that's one of the implications of the past tense of God. As for me, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. Nevertheless, your name shall be called, they shall no more be called Abraham, but your name shall be what? Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. He was talking to someone that has no baby, no child, and has been waiting for only God knows how long. But as far as God was concerned, I have, I have done it. You understand? So there is a level of faith and interaction that you need to go where you know that what you are looking at, God do it has, has been done. And I've noticed there are, these are a few examples. Do you know that in the New Testament, everything that Christ did on the cross, as far as Jesus is concerned, as far as God is concerned, the heavens are concerned, they are done. But yes. we are struggling to receive it because we are still on God will do it level. Where God wants to take you to the level of I have done it. Amen. Amen. There are implications. Please follow me. So I'm just showing you all that in the mouth of 2 Corinthians 13, verse 1 and 2 says, In the mouth of two or three weakness, let everything be established. So this principle, you can see that it's not just Old Testament, it's New Testament. There are more, but obviously I know we have a limited time. So please go back and look at it. There, that your situation that you're worried about. There is, there, there. God might have said, I have done it already. And you're still waiting for God to do it. Amen. Amen. God will give us understanding. Amen. So what are the implications? Because of time. But I want to take one more example. First Peter 2, 24. 
First Peter 2.24, this is a scripture that all of us know, but if many people quote it wrong, many people quote, by his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, I will be healed in their mind. By his stripes, when they lay under me. Whereas God is saying, by his stripes, you wear, if you look at it. And I don't think the Bible is making mistake in the tenses to make it in so many verses. You understand? So, by his stripes, you were healed. Why would God say wear? Because as far as God is concerned, it was done when Jesus went to the cross. Yes. If you look at Isaiah 53, where he talks about the death of Jesus. I think verse 4 and 5, and if you read from verses 1 to it says, verse 1 says, who has believed our report? I'm quoting often. So, to whom has the harm of the Lord revealed? So, when you believe, revelation comes. Alright? And when revelation comes, you find out that some of the things you're fighting for are actually already yours. It's the enemy that is trying to blind your eyes to it. Praise God. I hope we're getting it. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at some implications and I'll go back. So one implication I saw is that when God speaks, he sees it as what? Done. Yes? Why? Why do you think? Because he's God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who can argue with him? No. If you like, argue this way, argue that way. If God says, I have done it, you cannot change it. You cannot take him to court. Say, why God? Why did you? So when God speaks, he sees it as what? Done. And that's what we see in Genesis 17, 4. Please bring back that Genesis 17, 4. Because I saw it that God says, as for me, so as far as God is concerned, if you accept his word, his own part is done. <coughs> Amen. So the remaining bit that is not yet done is your own part. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. As far as God was concerned, Abraham was going to be the father of many nations. Whether people like it or not. But you know what happened? Abraham, you know, at that time, his name was Abraham. God now said, change your name to Abraham. Do you know, some people will refuse. Yeah? Some people will refuse and say, ah, they will be laughing at me now. I don't have any child. I will not be saying, oh, what's your name? I will say, I'm father of nations. Allah. You don't even have one child. I will say, you're father of nations. You understand? But he, once he heard that this is what God says I should be called, he started calling himself. Because as far as God was concerned, it was done. But in Abraham's mind, there needed to be a renewal. That is where our own problem comes from. That's where our own issue. Yeah? God says by his stripes we are healed. But many of us here are actually working in that divine healing. Very few. Even myself. So God keeps challenging me. He said, go and look at and I started seeing more and more. I've not arrived yet. But I believe that the little I have liked I've seen, I should share with my brethren. Amen. Amen. So when God sees it, it says it is done, it means it is done. It is now left for you to renew your mind, to line up your mind with it. That's why Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. So why God says this, when God speaks in past tense is because he's very confident. All right, of what he wants to do, what he intends to do, and he has all the power to what back it up, amen. It is now nothing can change it, only us, whether our mouth will align with it or not. Why people think, Oh, God is sovereign, he is, but on earth, he put man in charge. That is why, unless man prays, God will not be able to do anything, unless the devil finds a man to use, the devil cannot do anything either. That's the truth of the matter. The devil cannot come from the spiritual realm to hack anybody except he has a vessel, a physical vessel to use. In the same way God cannot take any charge on the physical realm except he has what? A vessel. Yeah? Because man is what? The original owner of the earth. When God made it, he says he gave dominion to man. It's like when you are now, let's say you're a landlord, yeah? You now rent your house out. The person is paying rent. The person is a tenant. Can you now come one day and say, I want to sleep on your bed, I evacuate. The person will carry you to court and he will win. True or false? No matter how powerful you're a landlord. Even if even if even in Nigeria where there's no law, you just go to your tenant's house and say, I want to sleep in your bed this night, evacuate. The man will look for how to deal with you to allow me to I paid rent. So in the hurt, God has made man in charge. The only way God can come in is when man prays. You understand why? That's why at times you look and say, why can't God do something? Why can't God? And God will say, have you prayed? Have you prayed? Because until you pray, because God will be a law breaker. If he says, I've given you dominion, I've given you authority, and then he now comes and starts doing his own. Do you understand that principle? It's very, very important. Because a lot of Christians are waiting for God to do what they need to do. God started showing me some of those things. The second implication is that when we see it as done, now our own bit of it, 
Yeah, it gives us hundred percent faith, so that we can even be singing and dancing even before the results. Remember Abraham in that Romans four. Bible says he was giving, he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God before the manifestation. Praise God. And you can see another thing again I saw. When Joshua heard that, see, I've given you this battle already. And all these men, all these five kings are gone up, they can't stand you. Joshua was so bold that the next time when he was winning, he said, God, I want the sun to stand still. I want the moon to stand still so I can deal with them. You understand? This is one nation against five nations. This is a nation where most of them were slaves. We are not trained soldiers. Get that. Get that scenario. You understand? But because they were so emboldened by the fact that God was with them, they were not afraid. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's the same thing that happened to you. When you believe God, the spirit of faith comes on you. When you see that God has done it. Yeah? Let me give you an example. Like, let's say, yeah, you went to pay for a good. Maybe you spent 100 pounds to pay for a pair of shoes. Yeah? You are very sure you paid. You now go to the till. Yeah? To maybe do a swap or a chain. And they say, no, you've not paid. Will you now say, okay, maybe I've not paid, or let me go back. Is that what you do? What will happen? Ah, you say, I'm sorry, I'm very certain I paid. I can bring my bank detail, I can bring my, you start, you start putting, you understand, English for them. Why? Because you're very sure. So when you're very sure that God has done something for you, you will not allow the enemy to steal it from you. Are you seeing that implication? Very, very key. So that's why what happened when Joshua realized, ah, God has given me the vision. He said, look, God, just even give me more time. They, don't, don't duck it yet. Let me deal with this people because I have the victory. God will help us to have the victory in all realms in Jesus' name. Amen. So the third implication I saw is that when we see it as done, we resist the enemy's attempt to steal it from us, which is our example I've not given you. Bible says in Obadiah 1.17, it says, On Mount Zion there shall be what? Deliverance. And Amen. the people of God shall... Amen. Amen. Some people have not been reading their Bible. Please go and write, read that one. Obadiah 1.17. Please bring it up. Because you are where? In Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the, where God loves to dwell. The presence of God, the church of God, the house of God. So, but upon Mount Zion, there shall be what? Deliverance. And there shall be what? Holiness. Don't forget that bit. And the house of Jacob, what? Shall possess their possession. So, if there's anything that God has promised you, and you can see in the Bible, and it's yours, if you lay claim to it, as far as God is concerned, especially in the New Testament, it is done. Because when Jesus died, what? It was said, it is finished. Everything was paid for. And that's why if you look at David, though was an Old Testament king, had an understanding. Look at Psalm 103. He was listing the benefits of salvation. Somebody that was still in the Old Testament. Because God was already telling him the blueprint of what he was going to do. Amen. That's why he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? You understand? Who feeds your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? You understand? He was just giving all those benefits of salvation. Praise God. And if you look at Isaiah 53 as well, the benefits were mentioned. So the benefit of salvation is not just that you are saved, but you are also redeemed from the cause of the law. And the cause of the law, if you look at Deuteronomy 28, he listed it. Amen. I cannot give you all that teaching because of my time, because I want us to pray. The fourth implication, sorry, that third implication, it means that you are to resist the devil. When he says you possess your possession, it means you are to what? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's the scripture. And the also the other um, scripture that I remember, Jesus said, he said, said, since the days of John the Baptist until now, that means until Jesus comes, the kingdom of God, what? Suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Amen. What does that mean? Ah. You know, there are some prayers that you do. Amen. Recently, God told me, he says, I say, speak in tongues, don't whisper in tongues. <laughs> Because I'm whispering that nothing's happening. So if you ask my husband, the last um, one week I was like, one hour praying in tongues. We're like, no. and do you know I've noticed a difference already? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because I've been mean, whispering, whispering, otherwise you're whispering after your wife said you fall asleep or your mind is right. Let's say speak in tongues, not whisper in tongues. Amen. Amen. God will help us. Amen. Amen. The fourth one is that the fourth implication is that it emboldens you to ask for more miracles. Alright? When you believe God. Amen. I can still remember how when I had delay in getting married and I started seeing something. I saw everyone had a delay in the Bible for one thing. Hannah, she got Samuel. Elizabeth, she got John the Baptist. 
Say much she got Isaac and and I said, Oh God, okay. Anyway, I have a delay, and when I'm, I'm receiving my own, I must receive double. And I didn't know I was asking for you to marry a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. But I just saw that principle that anything that is a delay, you can that's why Bible says I'll give you double for your yeah, trouble. Right. Because the person that is causing the delay is not God, it's the enemy. Mm. So if you don't exact from the Bible says if you catch a thief, you should make him pay how many times? Mm. It's in the scripture. I think it's seven times, at the minimum four. So me, I'll collect. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because of time now. So I want us to zoom back now. Alright? In Ephesians 1 verse 3. How many of us are seeing this scripture? Ephesians 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3. How many of us have seen this scripture? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Can you see the past tense again? Yes. Yeah. With all spiritual blessings where? In every place. In every place. In. Every place in Christ so once you are born again, you are in Christ Jesus. Those blessings. Are, but have you been able to bring them down to the head? That's what you have to ask yourself. They are what? In every places. They are certain. It's just like having money in the bank account. Somebody has given one million to you, but you don't know how to go about collecting it. Eh? They ask you for pass passwords. You don't know. They ask you for passbook. You say, what is that? They ask you for, you know, you are just, whereas well, the money is there. So, this is something that you need to go and look at. What are those spiritual blessings that are mine that I'm struggling to get it? God, give me understanding. One last scripture, which I've been praying, and we're going to use to pray for ourselves. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. I want us to look at verse 4 and verse 29. Because God spoke to me about verse 29. But I want to look at verse 4. It says, now Moses was giving the last covenant to these Israelites as he was living. And he said, if God did this, God did that, God did this for you in Egypt, in, in, in the bed. He says, yet, God has not given you a heart to perceive. Eyes to see. And yes, that's my 20 minutes gone. Give me five minutes, Pastor. I'm going to time myself for now. Six minutes. Yet, the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive, ears to see, and eyes to hear. Sorry. Eyes to see and ears to hear until this day. And I started praying for myself, God. It means that mine was this physical eyes. Yeah? And this physical, as the people in Google call it, the tabs. There is a, a spiritual high and a spiritual ear that God expects you to use to be able to walk in dominion on this earth. Because man is not just body and soul, man is spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is the dominant thing. Amen. So, this is one prayer I'm going to pray for. I said, God, give me heart to perceive. That problem, what is the solution? What is the root cause? Give me eyes to see. Discernment. Give me ears to hear. Alright, now, let's look at verse 29. The Bible says, The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children. Amen. Forever, that we may do all the words of this Lord. You know, I always quote this scripture. For years, I've known about it. Recently, during this 10 day fast, God started showing me, said, Do you know that until you have a revelation of that area of spiritual, whatever I've spoken about, it doesn't belong to you? Hmm. You cannot leave another person's revelation. Hmm. True of us. Yeah. True. That's why we would have heard many times, Hey, I'm um, the head, I'm not the tail. Abraham's blessings are mine, but you are still struggling. Hmm. Hey, um, my stripes are healed, but you're still going to the hospital every five days. Why? Because until you sit down, and that's what I've told God, God, I made that commitment, I want to sit down. Until you sit down to say, God, give me revelation about that area. And then it will not belong to you. Until I got revelation about financial prosperity in the scriptures, I had two shoes. That's why the fact that my father was had, one shoe was even a gift from my uncle. <laughs> one pair of shoes. <laughs> that's how I went through med school. Most of med school, first year or two, I was okay. Most of med school. I was basically waiting. Some most days, some days I was eating twice a day, so that I would stretch the money. Oh, so if you are doing zero, what they used to call it, one zero one, I was doing it. In fact, some of the ones said we know what than half, half of one. <laughs> Praise God! But God gave me this revelation. First, He told me tight. Then He told me double the tight. And I struggled because not the flesh. You say ah, the money that is not enough. But each time I obeyed, started showing me great things, better things, and. Whenever I, I try and derail, you say, go back and commit, go and do it. And I started seeing it over the years. You understand? Until you have revelation, 
about divine healing, you can't walk in it. What will happen is that they will lay hands on you, receive it, but after a few days, another problem will turn up. Until you have revelation on salvation, you cannot say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. True or false? People will be preaching you to you by your life. I don't know what they're even saying. So you need to ask God, based on this scripture and verse 4 now, please everybody stand up. Ask God, Lord, open my heart to perceive. Open my ears to hear. So that when the Bible is being read or when I'm reading the Bible, it's not just letter. Open my eyes to see. Please pray. Some of us were struggling to receive the baptism of those who we have not yet understood it. And it's not by your head, it's by your heart, your spirit man. Father, open my eyes to see. Oh, my spiritual eyes to see, oh God. Open my spiritual ears to hear. Let me hear what the spirit is saying to the churches, to me. Oh God Almighty, open my heart to understand those spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus that are in the heavenly places. I want mine to be manifested on earth where I am now. Oh Father God Almighty, open my eyes of understanding concerning divine being. Oh, open my eyes of understanding concerning oh God Almighty spiritual things. Open my heart, oh God. Open the eyes of my heart, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey, I want to see you. My eyes is open. Oh, open my eyes to your power, to your power, to give you back to, to say, oh, put my eyes up to the solution to that issue, please pray for yourself, brethren, oh, oh, open my eyes up, open my eyes up, God, I don't want you to make you say year after year, be a victim of me, when I will be a victim of me, after I give you praise, oh God, I give you praise, because my eyes are open, so you hold your glory and your goodness and mercy, Lord, open my eyes, so that we have been living in the present. Oh, Father Lord, I want to see that as far as you are concerned, these things are settled. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Lord, this one that I've preached myself, I want you to do it in my life. I want you to show me great things, O Lord. I want the Lord of my to be free. Oh, let me get that The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it had lighted upon Israel. What does that mean? There is a lightning by the word. That's what she was trying to say, that it is how much of a revelation of the word that you can fight for. Hallelujah. You don't know that something is your inheritance, you will be robbing yourself. And yet, everything is meant for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that's the first prayer I want to pray. Before we pray, can you also bring up, please, Acts chapter 20, um, sorry, 1 Samuel, first, 1 Samuel chapter 3, and um, verse 21. For a while now, we have been taking teachings, midweek service on, like eagles, you know, and we are going to continue part 3, by the grace of God, this Thursday. And the Lord appeared again. Before you bring 21, bring up, bring up verse 3. First Samuel, chapter 3, verse 3. And here, the Lamb of God went out. When the Lamb goes out, what happens? There's darkness. The light of God went up of the temple of the Lord. Where the ark of God was, and Samuel laid down to sleep. There was a dimming, no vision, no light. But by verse 21, please. By verse 21, what happened? The Lord appeared again, Shiloh. 
God will appear to us again. Amen. Darkness will be done away with. Amen. Dimness will be done away with. Amen. For the Lord revealed himself. Because he himself is the light. To Samuel in Shiloh. By the word of the Lord. So there was a season of dimness. There was a season of God. Making the light to appear. Lift your voices and say, Father, let the time turn for me. Let it be a new season for me. A new season of revelation. A new season of understanding. A new season of light. Let there be no dimness. I want to see as you see. Jesus Christ, open up my understanding. Let there be light. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. When there's light, there's demon. When there's demon, you cannot be kept in the dark. When you are understanding, understanding and revelation, you know how to possess your possession. In Jesus' name, we pray. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20. And verse 32. I didn't even know she was going to preach because I don't know what she was going to preach about. And she said she just went to get ready yesterday. But God had given her the word. So now everything is rhyming. And now, brethren, in this is the house, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. What is it able to do? Able to build you up. Build you up. I've not had a sermon, I don't know what she was, when I was talking of guest minister saying that you are being built up. So you want to tell the Lord, I want to be built up by the word I heard today. When you are built up, you are equipped. When you are built up, you become a treasure. And to give you an inheritance. So, the word of grace is what makes you to know your stuff. When you know what you are made of, you are now able to fight for your inheritance. To give you an inheritance among all of them that are sanctified. Lift your voice and call upon the name of Jesus. Let your light fill me. Let your light fill me. When your light fills me, I can know my inheritance. I can know my right. I can know my authority as a believer. In the name of Jesus. When I know my authority as a believer, then I am built up like you do a muscle building, like you do a body building. You are doing a spiritual building. Then I can be built up. I, I can be mighty. When I am mighty in the spirit, then I can take my light in Christ Jesus. Let me be built up. Let them be light for me. Let me be strengthened so that I can protect the process of my inheritance. In Jesus' name we pray. And she also brought up this Romans 29, 29, which says the things that God revealed there for us. Note that bit. The things that God, they say the secret things belong to God, but he did not put full stop there. He says, but those things, so there's still some things, still talking of revelation, still talking of the light. But it says, but those things that are revealed unto us, they are for who? They are for us. They are for us. He has already done his bit. It has been done in the past tense that we may do all the works of the Lord. So we are going to call upon the name of Jesus. I receive what is mine. I receive what is mine. Turn it to pray. 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 Turn it to I'm not going to be 
Come forward. We want to still pray with this grace that is in the house for you. Just come forward. 